Hello! In this video, we will discuss an interesting story about wine judging, and we use that story to introduce concepts such as overfitting and VC dimension in machine learning. We will later discuss the trade-offs of having complex machine learning models as well. In the last few lectures, we have discussed the basic approach of supervised learning. Essentially, we have a tunable mapping or a tunable function that needs to provide the output y given the input x. The idea is that we need to use the training data to tune the function and this is the learning process. To do so, we select or tune the parameters theta i of a function f in a way to minimize the training error. Another way to look at this process is that we are selecting one function from a collection of functions in a tunable box. However, selecting this function is not a straightforward process. We need to understand the complexity of these functions and guarantee low generalization error. Let's consider the following story regarding evaluating wine judges, which was featured in an episode of one of my favorite podcasts, Choiceology. I provide a short summary of the story. For more details and interesting facts, you can see the corresponding paper and the podcast given below. The California State Wine Fair competition plays a key role in promoting a California wine across the U.S. Winning the competition brings recognition and could represent an increment in sales for the local wineries. For that reason, wine judging is a fundamental aspect of the competition, given the business impact of the decisions. Although the State Fair is looking for judges to pick good wines, they more importantly want the judges to be consistent in their wine rating. A few years ago, some members of the State Fair came up with a way to measure the consistency of the wine judging process. Since the wines presented to the judges during the competition are anonymized, they set up a plan to repeat some of the wines in the same flight, which is the group of wines presented to the judges during the competition. The judges assumed they were still tasting different wines when in reality, they were occasionally tasting the same ones as before, thus testing fewer wines in total. With this plan, they could then measure any inconsistencies in the scoring by comparing a judge's original score on a specific glass and their second score on that same glass. They discovered that the judges were often inconsistent. About 15% of those judges did well, meaning that they have high consistency. 15% did very poorly, and the remaining 70% were in the middle. So they were thinking maybe they can ask the top 15% to teach the rest of the judges how to do better. Interestingly, however, when they repeated the experiment next year, a totally different group of judges replaced the previous group of good judges. There was a high degree of variability. To be fair, being a consistent wine judge is not an easy task. There are many factors affecting a judge's decision. These include sensory fatigue, time of day, order of tasting, and even personal preference. So in many cases, the judges were consistent only by chance. So essentially, wine judging could be a very noisy process. So you might ask, what does this have to do with machine learning? Well, I claim that there is a lot we can learn from this story about machine learning. So let's go back to our problem of machine learning, specifically supervised learning. Suppose that you have a large collection of functions and a training data set, and you are trying to select one of these functions that fits your data. You can think of each of the functions as a judge. We are trying to find the best judge, that is, the judge that is most consistent. The list of the repeated wines can be thought of as your training data. Using this list and the correct labeling, which in this case means consistent rating, you would like to select the best judges. Similarly, in machine learning, we pass the training data to our tunable box and select the function that best fits the data, that is, the one that minimizes the training error. Using this analogy, we can understand an important phenomenon in machine learning related to model complexity and overfitting. You see, 
there are some judges or functions that perform well only by chance. So in reality, they might not have a good performance in the next round. This is similar to our discussion of train and test sets. The initial wine collection was the train set and the next year's collection that showed inconsistencies for the same judges can be considered as the test set. So the 15% of judges who performed well in the train set did not necessarily did well in the test set. This means the generalization performance was poor, making it very unlikely that the selected judges are really consistent all the time. This can be used to understand the idea behind overfitting. To better understand the concept of overfitting in the wine judging scenario, let's consider the following questions. What is the probability that there is a judge that performs well by chance? What does this probability depend on? Well, if you have a large number of judges, it is more likely that somebody by chance performs well. Similarly, if I have a group of people and I ask each of them to toss a coin 10 times, our chances of obtaining 10 heads consecutively by someone in the group increases as the number of people increases. The number of judges is equivalent to the number of functions in your machine learning algorithm. And having a large number of functions means having a richer, more flexible model, or equivalently, a more complex model. This implies that we have more flexibility in choosing the function. For instance, in our simple linear regression problem example, we had only two parameters that we could tune. But what if we increase the complexity of the model by adding more degrees and parameters to our model? Here, the tunability goes up. We can observe that the complex model in fact follows each training data point perfectly. But how well does it perform on unseen examples? When we have more complex models, two things happen. First, it is more likely that there exists a function within our model that performs well and truly does what you want it to do. Second, it is more likely that you observe other bad functions within the model that just by chance give you good results on the training data. So in the training phase, you might end up choosing one of those bad functions. And this is what happens when overfitting occurs. Overfitting means that we are fitting to the noise or the randomness of the input data due to the high complexity and flexibility of our model. This is an undesired phenomenon and one of the most important trade-offs in machine learning. We can think of the number of parameters in our tunable function as the degrees of freedom or how much flexibility we have. As we discussed, higher flexibility can be both good and bad. Good because it is more likely that the model includes a good function, but bad because it increases the probability of overfitting. Let's try to look at this closely. Here, suppose each set shows the collection of functions in our model. The one on the left includes a smaller number of functions, that is, it represents a model with a smaller degrees of freedom. The one on the right is a bigger space and has a larger number of functions, so it represents a model with a larger degrees of freedom. If you have a small space of functions, it is easy to find the best one. However, there is very few of these functions in our model in the first place, so the best function might not be good enough. In such a case, underfitting has occurred. On the other hand, in a space with a large degrees of freedom, it is more likely that there exists a good function somewhere in the space. However, since there are too many functions in the space, it is more difficult to find the right one. The degrees of freedom for a model is technically known as the vapnik chervonenkis or VC dimension. VC dimension measures the complexity of the functions that can be learned by a machine learning algorithm. A high level of freedom renders a very complex model and we therefore must be careful about overfitting. To conclude in this video, we first discussed the concept of noise or randomness in our training data. We talked about model complexity, which can be defined by the number of parameters or the flexibility of the model. For example, a linear model versus a polynomial model. We discussed the concept of overfitting in which 
the model might start to fit to the noise in the input data. So it will then produce inaccurate predictions for future and unseen data. We talked about VC dimension, which refers to the degrees of freedom in a model. It measures the complexity of the functions that can be produced by a machine learning algorithm. Finally, we discussed the complexity trade-off. Oversimplified models, that is, the models with small degrees of freedom, are easy to fit but might not perform well and could result in underfitting. On the contrary, complex ones are more prone to the noise in the data, which could create overfitting. In the next videos, we discuss ways to handle this trade-off.